Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com. Here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, February 10th through Sunday, February 16th, 2020. For this week's weekly reading, we're actually going to be using the Wisdom of the Oracle deck by Colette Baron reed for the main message for everyone. I got a lot of positive feedback from using this Oracle deck for the special message card, so we're going to try something different and we're actually going to use it for the main message this week. Your special message card, depending on your stone of choice, is going to be coming from the Archangel Divination deck by Radley Valentine. Just a reminder that we are in the month of February, so if you would like to see an overview of the energies for the month, along with the astrological highlights and messages from our angels and guides, be sure to go to my YouTube channel and watch the monthly angel card reading for the month of February. So let's start by taking a look at your stones of choice. The first stone of choice here is a beautiful... Herkimer diamond. It looks like clear quartz crystal, but it's Herkimer diamond. And what I think about when I look at Herkimer diamond because of its clarity like that clear quartz crystal is that if you are looking for some sort of clarity in your life regarding a situation or a circumstance, this may in fact be able to provide you with that crystal clear clarity. Now this does relate to the crown chakra as well as the third eye chakra. So it opens up that crown chakra for higher vibrational spiritual energy to pour through the crown and into the body activating the third eye as well in our psychic vision. Your second stone of choice is golden calcite. Golden calcite is going to relate to the solar plexus chakra because of the golden yellow color. And this stone is obviously great for empowerment, which deals with the solar plexus chakra. It's also a great stone for leadership, responsibility, confidence, courage, and healthy, positive self-worth. So again, this is golden calcite. And then your last stone of choice is called jet j-e-t jet it's a black stone it's actually petrified wood so it has a light feeling to it weight wise it feel it feels less like a stone and almost has this sense of feeling like plastic but jet is a very powerful protection stone very powerful protection against negative lower vibrational energies and it helps to absorb those negative energies of course this stone as a lot of the black stones do deals with the root chakra so this has a great capacity to help to ground your energy so if you're feeling a little scattered or lacking in focus this is going to help to ground you so again your stones of choice for the week are the herkimer diamond the golden calcite or the jet so let's start by looking at the astrological highlights for the month on the 10th. Now, there's not a lot of heavy duty um, aspects going on this week. So I'm going to talk a bit more about the moon and where the moon is all this week. But on Monday, the 10th, we do actually have Venus, the planet of love and relationships, money and finances, as well as the ruler of the divine feminine energies and our sense of self worthiness or how we value things or value ourselves. And Venus is in Aries right now. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac about initiation and leadership. And it's a fire sign. So it's fiery, energetic energy. It's confidence. It's independence. So Venus is very independent and confident in the sign. However, on Monday, the 10th, she is connecting with Chiron, the wounded healer. Now, this happens very early Pacific time on Monday. So if you're watching this video early you're going to have felt this on Sunday the 9th from last week, um, as well as on Monday. So Venus connecting with Chiron, the wounded healer, is going to bring up wounds regarding our sense of confidence or our sense of independence. It's going to bring up wounds of our sense of self 
uh, confidence or self-worthiness, self-assertiveness, um, all of those things that deal with that Aries self kind of energy. So again, bringing up those types of wounds. Now on Monday and Tuesday, the mo moon happens to be in Virgo. And as I mentioned, there's not a lot of major aspects going on this week. So I will talk a little bit about where the moon is. The moon on Monday and Tuesday being in Virgo brings up um, emotional self-perfection energies or being a little self-critical or self-judgmental or hard on yourself. The moon is about our emotions and our feelings. And Virgo has a tendency to be very analytical and logical, yes, but since the moon is about our emotions and feelings, we're going to look at this as Again, being emotionally hard on yourself, being a little bit perfectionistic, and that translates into being a little bit maybe self-critical, which is kind of a self-analyzing tendency. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday into early Thursday, and this is all Pacific or Eastern uh, time, the moon is in Libra during that time. And again, no major aspects with any other planets, but the moon in Libra brings up partnership matters, matters of relationships, matters of equality and balance. And on Tuesday and Wednesday and early Thursday, while the moon is in Libra, it's going to oppose Chiron and Venus, which we just talked about in Aries. And it's going to challenge Jupiter, Pluto and Saturn, which are all in Capricorn. Now, we already talked about what Chiron and Venus is about, bringing up those wounds of our sense of self-identity or independence or confidence, self-assuredness. And so this is going to translate into relationship matters because the moon is in the partnership sign of Libra. So we're going to be um, interacting with other people where these wounds may come up. And then that challenging aspect to Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. Jupiter is the ruler of our belief systems, rules the expansion principle, so it makes the energies larger or seem bigger or exaggerated. And then Pluto is the planet of death and rebirth, transformation, transmutation. It rules the subconscious and our subconscious patterns, our shadow side. And Saturn rules energies of limitation, restriction, insecurity, um, karmic uh, challenges from the past. It does also rule structure and form and manifestation, but we have to remember this is a challenging aspect here. So again, we're going with some of those other qualities that were mentioned with the Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, and the moon in a challenging connection to those. So again, bringing up a lot of relationship things going on. Now this, this can be positive, although it's going to feel challenging, but it can be positive for spiritual growth, for karmic cleansing, for purification, for transformation, for changing our belief systems uh, within the relationships. And then on the rest of the day of Thursday and Friday and then early into Saturday, the moon is going to now be in Scorpio. And the moon in Scorpio is very deep. The moon it rules our intuition and our feelings and our subconscious. And Scorpio is a sign of death and rebirth and transmutation. And it rules empathic abilities and clairsentient abilities, which is our psychic ability to feel or sense energies. And it's going to be opposing Uranus in Taurus. Now, Uranus is that planet that rules sudden and unexpected happenings, surprises, redirections, the strange, the unusual. And again, we're talking about the moon here. So our emotional nature may be triggered. Our shadow side with moon and Scorpio may be triggered with Uranus. There may also be something going on with money or finances because Scorpio, where the moon is, does rule other people's finances and financial resources or personal resources of others. Whereas Taurus, which is where Uranus is, rules our money and our personal resources. And so there may be some sort of changes or redirections um, in money matters. The moon in Scorpio during those days, Thursday, Friday, and early into Saturday, is also in a challenging aspect to the sun, which is in Aquarius. Now, Scorpio, where the moon is, is a fixed sign, meaning it's kind of stubborn, fixed in its ways. The sun being in Aquarius, Aquarius is also a fixed sign. It's a fixed air sign, so it's also a little bit stubborn in its ways. So we have fixed air, which is our thoughts, our ideas, and the way we communicate. And we have fixed water with Scorpio, which is our emotions and our feelings. So there might be some sort of clash here and wanting to kind of 
stand firm in what we think or feel or believe and not wanting to really give way. And that might cause some challenges during those days. And then on Saturday evening or later Saturday and into Sunday, the moon is in Sagittarius. So things will lighten up a bit from it being in Scorpio. Yeah, we, we might feel more positive, more optimistic, more inspirational. Also on Sunday the 16th is when we have the other major planetary aspects that are happening. We have Mars moving into the sign of Capricorn. So it's been in Sagittarius for a while. And Mars is a fire planet. It's fiery. It's energy. It's action. It's forward movement. And while it was in Sagittarius, which is mutable fire or changeable fire, it might have been all over the place. We might have not had a clear direction or clear focus. And we might have been vacillating all over the place. Now on Sunday, with Mars moving into Capricorn for the next few weeks, things become a little bit more focused, a little bit more grounded, a little bit more goal-oriented and practical. And we're working more on career matters or projects or who we are out in the world. Again, our goals and our ambitions is what Capricorn rules. It's also about our sense of authority. Capricorn can rule authority or authority figures. And Mars moving into that sign gives us more of a drive to own our own authority um, and to also take responsibility. Capricorn is a sign of responsibility. So Mars is giving us the impetus and the energy to take more responsibility for our direction, our forward movement in our lives. And then the other big thing happening on Sunday, the 16th, is that Mercury, the planet of the mind, the mental realm, our thoughts, our ideas, and communications, is going retrograde at 12 degrees of Pisces. Now, Mercury has been in its shadow since early last week. So we've already started to feel the effects as soon as Mercury went into Pisces, really, is when we started to enter the shadow period of this retrograde cycle. So again, early last week, we were starting to have missed appointments or miscommunications or misunderstandings and those types of things that can happen with Mercury retrograde, delays perhaps in travel, etc. Now, remember, Mercury retrograde is a great time to redo or reevaluate or reorganize um, to restructure our lives. Now, it is in Pisces, so that puts a little bit of a what we call a monkey wrench into things because Pisces is not about structure and form. You know, Pisces is about illusion and elusiveness and things being free flowing and imaginative and creative. So Mercury in Pisces is very creative and imaginative and kind of goes with the flow. Uh, so especially with this retrograde that officially starts on Sunday the 16th, although like I said, we started feeling it last week and all of this week as well, we started to have that feeling come upon us that our thought processes may have become more muddled or misunderstood by ourselves or others and there might be a lack of clarity and again confusing communications and all different forms that are happening. Now as it goes retrograde for the next uh, few weeks here or a week and a half or so until uh, mid-March, mid-March is when it will turn back to direct motion, but as it's retrograde it gives us time to do as much of that restructuring, reorganization, reevaluating, reviewing as we possibly can, even with it being in Pisces. So it's best to just kind of keep open and going with the flow with our thought processes and with, you know, where our ideas might be heading to not necessarily try to latch on and onto any one thing to allow it to to allow it to kind of vacillate even or free flow from one thing to another. Again, our decisions may be a little wavering and vacillating during this time because of that Piscean influence. So just kind of go with the flow. Mercury and Pisces, because Mercury is a logical planet, but it's in a sign that's very intuitive and psychic. We want to just really listen to our intuition, to what we feel might be right or what we see in our mind as far as our imagination or what we visualize or get flashes of, of insight or psychic impressions about. 
since Mercury does rule the mind, again, it stands to reason that while it's in this psychic sign that our psychic senses are going to be heightened, especially if we practice meditation and other self-reflective spiritual practices. Now, also on Sunday, the moon, as I said, is in Sagittarius Saturday evening and Sunday. So the moon is going to make a challenging aspect to Mercury in Pisces as it turns retrograde, which is going to intensify that energy a little bit. And as I said, the moon rules our emotions. It's an immutable fire sign, so we might be a little bit more emotionally reactive. And Mercury slowing down and turning retrograde in Pisces might bring up some misunderstandings. So just be aware that there might be some emotional or communication misunderstandings with you and other people, as well as just perhaps just being confused within your own mind about things. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the messages from our angels and guides. Now, again, oh, some of you wanted to know exactly what this deck was. This is Wisdom of the Oracle Divination Cards by Colette Baron reed This is what the booklet looks like here so that you can write down the name of the deck or her name. A lot of you wanted to purchase this deck. It is a wonderful deck. And I believe it has 48 cards in it. It has, you know, just as many or around as many cards as a tarot deck does. So it's got a lot of uh, messages and options in here. So we're going to see how this goes since this isn't a regular tarot deck as far as doing this reading. So the first card that came out is number 13, Message in a Bottle. It seems like we got this card as a special message card um, in the last couple of weeks in one of the readings. It seems that it's a familiar card. Now, the number 13, and I just put in my own numerological kind of slant here when I'm looking at the numbers of the cards, but the number 13 is a karmic number in numerology, and it deals with transformation, death and rebirth, and going through inner changes like a snake shedding its skin. Now, the card itself called message in a bottle obviously this is dealing with messages communications and as i said we have mercury slowing down this week to turn to retrograde motion now the stork is sitting here at the top of the bottle meaning messages coming from up above so this can be messages from our angels and guides messages that we bring through from our higher soul selves from the universe itself also this bottle is half submerged in the water if you notice so this is about also um, messages of an emotional nature or of an intuitional or psychic nature. The water deals with psychic and intuition. Water, uh, one of the water signs, cancer, comes to mind, also deals with home and family. So some of these messages may be, again, emotionally based messages, not necessarily negative, but emotionally based messages from those in our home and family or from those that we're really emotionally close to, that we have a close emotional connection to. So pay attention to your intuitions and your psychic guidance. Pay attention to your meditations and messages that may be coming in from your angels and guides. And of course, a lot of times, even with messages coming from other people, you know, communications or information coming from other people, that those communications and those messages are also divinely guided from spirit. So also pay attention to what other people are saying to you or um, information they may be giving you. There may be hidden messages that are within those conversations with other people as well. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the next card here. The next card is number eight in community. Okay, now the number eight, the number eight often deals with life path, destiny path, career path, money and finances, but it's also a number of uh, empowerment, where we're being disempowered or where we need to take back our pow power, where we need to empower ourselves. And its true positive function is with the balance of the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And you can see that in the number eight by turning the number eight on its side and it becomes the infinity symbol. So it's this free flowing infinity symbol. And again, so there's a balance here with masculine and feminine energies. Now the card itself says community. So especially um, in the middle of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and partly Thursday with that moon in um, Libra, Libra is the sign of other people, you know, partnerships, relationships. 
And even at the end of the week with the moon in Sagittarius, Sagittarius can be connections with uh, other people, other cultures, uh, people of other mindsets or belief systems. And this community idea of connecting with other people of like mind or connecting even with home and family, connecting with friends, finding those people that you share common interests with. Here we have a, a mother giraffe and a baby giraffe. So some of you may want to look up the giraffe totem. Um, that one is not uh, specifically in my brain as far as what the giraffe totem means, except for the fact that giraffes have very long necks, right? Then And their, their necks reach way up into the sky, which can be seen as a form of connecting with the divine, connecting with universe, God source energy, spirit, and bringing down those messages through the crown chakra, through the throat chakra with the long neck of the giraffe. I want to say, you know, speaking your truth or channeling information from a higher uh, dimension or a higher uh, energy. But again, you want to connect with those that share a common goal, a common interest, a common idea. Now, again, this can be friends, this can be coworkers, this can be people that you might want to do a project with or that you are doing a project with, or again, home and family. All of these things are indicated. Just know that relationships seem to be indicated here. Now, community to me usually means more than two people. Um, but like I said, we have the moon in Libra this week, which is about one-on-one -on -one connections and partnerships, and it does show just two giraffes here. And later on with the moon uh, on the weekend in Sagittarius, that might also be an indicated time of connecting with others. And it might be in a class. It might be in a workshop. It might be in, in some sort of um, social situation where you're finding your tribe or finding your community. Um, so just know that you know, there's uh, several ways that this can play out. Now, the last card here came out as two cards. So we're going to take a look at that first card here. And that is number 19, which says flexible. Now, the number 19 in numerology is also a karmic number. There's only four karmic numbers that we recognize in numerology. And the 13, the one that we had in the beginning, um, is a karmic number. And the 19 here is also a karmic number. You know what? As I'm looking at this, I just, you know, spirit said, no, no, that's not a 13. That's a 15. And I'm even wearing my glasses right now. I'm sorry. So the 15 here is um, not a karmic number, but we're dealing here with maybe some unexpected change. And I also have to think that since I saw that as a 13 to begin with, that there might be some sort of transformation in the messages coming in. But this truly being number 15, we want to look at change and redirection, that these messages and information can somehow be redirecting or changing our, our lives in some way. So again, apologies there. But number 19 is a karmic number. And this deals with beginnings and endings. The number one is a sign of new beginnings. The number nine is a number about completion or endings. And the karmic number 19 itself is about learning to stand on one's own two feet, be more independent, take charge of your life, but at the same time also connecting with other people that can help you or asking for other help or getting involved in some sort of community. So it's a very interesting balance of both of those things. Now, the flexible part here, um, you know, I think of, again, Mercury and Pisces, and it's slowing down to go retrograde. So I feel like we need to be flexible in our thoughts. We need to be flexible in our ideas. We need to be flexible in the way we communicate or receive communications from other people. That not everything is black and white is how I feel. Not everything is like standard here. We have to be flexible. We have to be ever changing. When new information comes in, we need to go with the flow and be flexible with that and be able to change our direction or accept a new belief system or make a new decision based on the present moment of what information is coming in. And that's what I feel like when I see this card flexible. Um, it's also to me about balance. You can see this person is very balanced here as she at the same time is showing us how flexible she is. So we want to stay in balance with all of this incoming changing information and messages and how we're feeling and not being really sure or clear about how we're feeling. We want to make sure that we stay balanced in the energies right now. Okay. And then the card that came out with this one. 
is number 24 and it says time for a nap. Now, number 24, it adds up to a six, like the number 15 that we had to begin with. And the number six is also a balance number, balancing our inner emotional world with our outer world of responsibilities, including our career path. And, um, you know, the number two is also a number of balance. And the number four is a, a message about being grounded, um, but sometimes not too grounded with that number four. And this idea of time for a nap, it, it makes me feel like we need to recharge, we need to rest, we need to rejuvenate our energies in some way. And again, with Mercury ruling the mind, and it being in Pisces, and it being, uh, you know, slowing down in its retrograde cycle and, and turning retrograde on Sunday, that may actually physically cause us to feel a little drained, a little tired, a little lacking in focus in our mind. You know, there's a lack of clarity in some ways with that. So I feel like this is a message to honor what your physical body is telling you. If you need to take some downtime, if you need to take some meditation time, if you need to take some sleep time, if you need to take a sick day or a day off, or you need to go away for the weekend to recharge, I feel like this is saying that it's okay, that you need to do that, that it's appropriate to do that. So stay flexible and, you know, again, allow your mind to rest and recharge itself is the message that I'm getting here. Now let's take a look at your special message card depending on your stone of choice. Okay, so for those of you that chose the um, Herkimer diamond, Give us a little shuffle, asking for clarity for the Herkimer Diamond people. This one is showing itself to me. This is crystal clear intentions. And isn't that interesting because the uh, Herkimer Diamond message was about clarity as well. So here we have Archangel Michael with crystal clear intentions. And it says, be clear about what you desire and focus upon it with unwavering faith. Now, again, there might be a lack of clarity happening and going on with Mercury and Pisces just as it is by itself. Mercury and Pisces just can have a lack of focus and clarity or groundedness itself. And put that with the, the fact that it's slowing down to turn retrograde this week, and there right, might really be some confusing uh, energies, confusing thoughts in your own mind, confusing messages coming in, people changing their minds, things like that. But with this, if you're trying to manifest something, you're trying to work towards a goal, you're trying to create something, uh, working on a project, etc. This is saying to take time out. I'm gonna I'm gonna add in the idea of meditation because that always helps us to ground and focus and balance our energies. Is that you want to send out a clear picture or visualization or a clear intention of what it is that you desire to create and manifest in your life. And if you don't know yet, it's okay, is what I'm hearing. I mean, you can't necessarily expect that you even know what you exactly want. So take time to figure that out. Take, take some downtime. Again, self-reflective time, meditation time, walks out in nature by yourself, or just getting away from other people that might be bringing in the confusion to begin with is going to be helpful for you to make sense out of what is it that I really want in life? What is it that I really desire to happen here? Because if you don't know, and if you are lacking in being clear, the universe isn't going to know what kind of assistance to give you or what kind of messages to give you because you're vacillating all over the place. So you need to be as clear as you possibly can within yourself and within your own mind of what it is that you desire to experience or what it is you desire to manifest in your life. And you can call upon Archangel Michael to cut away as he has that sword and that shield for protection, but he uses his sword to cut away all uh, extra energies or lower vibrational energies that are getting in the way of us being able to be clear in our own energy to know what it is that we want. So have him use that sword to, you know, uh, metaphorically cut away what it is that is keeping you attached or tied to other people or other people's thoughts or opinions or belief systems so that you can be clear enough within your own energies and have the clarity to set the intentions that 
is in your highest and best interest. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the special message card for the golden calcite people. Giving this a little shuffle. This one's calling my attention for golden calcite. This one says nurture with Archangel Gabriel or Gabriel. And it says, as you nurture a child, you nurture your own inner child. Both activities are important for you right now. So I'm really feeling that you're, it's about inner child work right now, um, especially with the moon in um, Libra. And it's connecting, remember, to Chiron, the wounded healer, which just connected to Venus, which is about our self-confidence and our self-identity. And then it's connecting with Pluto, about our subconscious, transformation energies, Saturn, karmic lessons, Jupiter, the planet that expands all of that. So I really feel like we're working here with the inner child. Now, this can definitely be about connecting with a child in your life or nurturing a child in your life, whether it's your child, a grandchild, or a child that you're connected to, that you have a relationship to. But also remember, too, that there's some inner child work, it seems, going on. And I feel like, of course, the angels are here all surrounding this child. And so there's a lot of protection here. There's a lot of guidance here. There's a lot of assistance here. A lot of love here. A lot of love and nurturing to assist with this process. If it is something to do with a child in your life, um, calling upon Archangel Gabriel for like information or messages of assistance can be quite helpful. And also Archangel Metatron. Archangel Metatron um, helps with the crystal and indigo children out there. So the indigo, uh, whether it's a small child all the way up into you know adulthood, but the indigos are more of those warrior types of children that kind of kick back against authority. And of course then the crystal and or rainbow children are more of the, the healers and the sensitives and the empaths that are out there. And of course, there's a lot of children, uh, adults as, as well being included that exhibit um, all of these qualities in some way. So nurture, nurture, nurture. Okay. And for those of you that chose the jet, the jet crystal, this one right away is sticking out. So let's pull that one out prioritize with Archangel Metatron. We just brought up Archangel Metatron here. Now it says, focus on your highest priorities. I will help you get organized and motivated. So Archangel Metatron was one of um, only two archangels that lived an earthly life and then was made an archangel. So in his earthly life, he was a scribe. He was one that wrote down the written word. And this is why He's here to help to organize and prioritize activities or information or uh, chores or, you know, goals in your life that need to be accomplished. And if you have been lacking focus or motivation or organization, call him in because he's going to help to you to get there. He's going to help you to get motivated and get focused and get organized, although with these energies of retrograde Mercury and Pisces, um, might be a little bit more difficult than usual, but Archangel Metatron is definitely going to be able to help, especially if you can kind of write. I want to say writing something down is a creative um, task. You know, when we write something, when we just let our minds free flow and, and use our imagination to write something, we're using more of the intuitive and we're more free flowing in that way. Even though we're doing something structured like writing, and using some sort of focus with that writing, we can combine it with the intuitive, creative, free-flowing water energy, which Pisces is, to kind of do that. So I feel like that is one way to prioritize what it is that you need to do next or the things or goals that you have over the next month or three months. Now here it looks like Archangel Metatron is carrying um, some sort of bowl here. There's a lot of uh, higher vibrational light in it. So I feel like there's a gift that's coming or on the way. So the more that you can get organized in what it is that you need to do, or the more you can get motivated to take an action or take a step forward, and especially if it's a creative step, um, then there's some sort of you know, whether it's a message or whether it's some sort of gift of support or other type of assistance, I feel like is forthcoming for you. 
All right, everybody. I hope you've all liked this weekly angel card reading. Um, I've been trying something a little different here with my sound quality in the last couple of weeks. So uh, continue to give me your feedback. I'm still getting various feedback of some of you saying the volume is better, other people saying it's not, other people saying that it was fine all along. So I really am confused myself as to what's going on with the volume. But hopefully with what I'm trying here um, in the last week and this week will help to uh, create a, a better listening experience for you in my videos and I appreciate your support and your patience during that process also again another reminder that my new podcast my second podcast with psychic medium Kathy Munson is out on empowered voices our YouTube channel empowered voices our Facebook page empowered voices um, so be sure to listen to our second monthly podcast. Really excited that we're continuing to do this. And if you have any ideas of what you'd like to hear Kathy and I talk about in a future podcast, please email us at empoweredvoices11 at gmail.com. That's the number 11, empoweredvoices11 at gmail.com. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm sending you lots of love and light and many, many angel blessings.